this is the this is the first master class not only of mvs but uh, even uh, for any other awards as far as ad club is concerned because it was discussed widely at the managing committee meeting that we must have master class at least for two of our uh, premium uh, awards that is fes and mvs is lot to learn over there so we actually started toying with the idea of fes but that could not materialize and punita was quite keen that at least before this mvs we must do the master class so we have the fes coming up the award ceremony 3 days from here but yes here we are on 16th doing the mvs master class and uh, i would like to thank all the friends from the industry there has been a tremendous response to the first one there have been around 211 registrations that we have received so uh, we welcome the speakers and we have with us a uh, chairperson of mbs committee uh, the favorite media person punita and uh, she will introduce our speakers so over to you punita ah uh, thanks bipin as bipin said uh, welcome to the first ever mbs master class in fact the first ever master class for the advertising club uh while we were uh, thinking about uh, uh, you know what should this master class be about uh the thing is all of us know that winning awards is not just about the work you do but also about how you articulate your work in the entry form be it words or video right and agencies who participate have normally been curious about what is it uh, you know that makes a winning entry in fact we've got lots of people asking us what is it that made that award win you know what did they enter you know that made it impressive enough for the jury to get uh, uh, your uh, jury to give them the award therefore we thought the best way to start the master class is to address one very basic question uh, which is what actually makes a winning entry and a winning entry at the mbs and uh, we thought the best people to talk about it would obviously be uh, the participants who who have sent entries to the mvs and actually won awards for uh, the entries right uh, so uh, we are uh, we are starting this as a first master class but this is going to be a regular feature now uh, before the mvs and we also said we should time it before the entries close uh, entries at least the first deadline closes right and therefore just a few days before the mvs deadline closes and we also know a lot of agencies work on it just in the last few days we thought we will keep it in the last few days before the entry closes and uh, uh, therefore uh, you know we are hosting it today so thanks to everyone who are there we've got over 200 registration and we can already see about 73 75 of them already online so welcome to the mvs master class or uh, to decide who's to present uh, we just went back to mbs 2023 and looked at who were the top 3 clients of the year the top 3 clients of the year were mondelez by unilever and netflix and today we just have the team leaders from those three clients talking to all of us and you uh, in terms of what makes a winning entry uh, the first speaker to go would be sairam or sai as he's known from webmaker i actually don't think he needs any introduction uh, has been a group emma life group emma now sairam because you've been there from from what i know from 2004 or something like that right uh, so uh, a, a hardcore group emma who currently is leading the digital agenda and setting what should be the digital uh, transformation for webmaker in the future so he'll be the first speaker and since two of the winning clients last year which is the mondelez and uh, netflix are from webmaker he will actually talk on behalf of both of those clients on what makes a winning entry uh, the second person who will talk to us is uh, john brito again i don't think needs any introduction spent over 17 years uh, in the uh, in uh, the media agencies and is currently principal partner at falcrom working on some of the four co categories of unilever and tremendous experience in fmcg so he'll be the second speaker to actually go on after sai winds up now the way we have structured this whole thing is that uh, it's not only about what they say i'm sure a lot of you will have queries while listening to them or after listening to them uh, so they will talk for about 20 25 30 minutes and then uh, uh, on the chat box please just pop up all your questions and once they finish the session they will start addressing the questions one by one so first sai will do it and then john will take over right that's how we've structured the presentation Uh, so welcome sai welcome john welcome all the people who've logged in uh, to listen to both of them and i'm going to hand it over to sai all yours uh, to talk to us about how every entry that's in mbs 2024 can actually win an award thank you sai 
Yeah, and before Sai starts, the last date to submit the entries for this year MVs is 20th, this Saturday. I'm sure not too many people are happy about that, uh, Bipin, but then... <laughs> please... That's the last extension we can give. Anyway. Uh, uh... Okay. <laughs> Yeah, sir, all yours. Before before we sort of go into the presentation, I would, uh, uh, like the way both Punita and Bipin mentioned, I think one great uh, tip or trick is to begin with the end in mind. Now that all of you know that 20th is the deadline, you know how you need to reverse engineer and work accordingly. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Punita. Thank you, Bipin. Thank you, Smita. And thank you to all the other members of the ad club. Uh, uh, like uh, being part of this industry for a long time and like, you know, uh, this is a great initiative uh, in terms of understanding, you know, what works kind of thing. So uh, uh, what I have attempted, uh, you know, I, I would still like to believe that I'm still a learner in this. So whatever I have observed, whatever I have observed in 2023, as well as in some of the couple of older years, managed to put that together. Uh, of course, it's not exhaustive. There are a lot more and each of you, if you, one of you who worked on it also, I'm sure, We'll have a lot more pointers to add on the same. If someone can just project the deck. So if we go to the first slide, if you go to the next slide, please. So the uh, before we get into uh, the reason why I am here, uh, I am representing a multiple uh, stakeholders. First and foremost, all the superheroes in Wavemaker. Um, second is all our uh, rock star clients and uh, blessed and privileged to have clients, uh, Mondelez, Netflix, and some of others. And some of the clients are so interested and vested in this process that they sit with us, they give us feedback on the entries, they challenge us, and they help us to make it much, much, much better. And of course, all the partners who worked with us in different stages, including executing the work itself, and also some of the partners working and helping us with some requests, which we have typically uh, before the submission of the entries or as a process of the presentations. So thanks to uh, Wavemaker, uh, all the key stakeholders in Wavemaker, all the clients and all our partners. Going to the next slide. Uh, see, most of you who follow Asterix will know it for uh, the limited few who don't necessarily follow Asterix, the comic strip, so there is a character called Obelix uh, who's on the third uh, panel, the guy who is well-built and healthy. Uh, he falls into the magic potion as a kid. So that's not allowed to him. So what I wanted to say is this session is not for the veterans who have been like participating in MVs. It's not for people like who really know the nuances and the uh, secret sauce to the uh, magic potion. But it is more to people who just started the journey or who are in the course of understanding in terms of how they can make this better. So moving to the next slide. Uh, the way um, um, we have essentially structured the current presentation, there are two parts. So obviously the round one for which uh, Punita and Bipin had announced the deadline, which is this coming week. So five tips that you need to keep in mind for round one, which is basically the return entries. And the second part of the presentation is going to be some tips for the round two, which is the presentation that you make to the uh, marketers and to the industry body. So the first tip for the return entries is, uh, is things which most of you would have heard about, uh, which is basically like, what's, what's your core story? Uh, if you can just click once. So this, 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 uh, this is something uh, which has inspired a lot of us. This is from Pixar's, uh, uh, website where they have created a framework around storytelling and who better than Pixar to tell, you know, what works in the storytelling framework. And if you typically see their storytelling framework, I mean, it starts with, you know, once upon a time and the context gets set and then every day means something keeps happening. And uh, then there is a turn one or there is a, a series of incidents which sort of change the course of story, which is until one day something changes and because of that the hero or the protagonist do something and don't necessarily succeed and hence because of that they try numerous other things because of which and until finally that sort of results into a success kind of thing now the the, the principles of storytelling honestly 
have like not changed over the so many years. It's about ensuring how to keep it really simple, how to ensure that a lot of people understand. Like I, I'm a big cricket lover. And uh, typically I always used to take cricketing references or cricketing uh, stories or cricketing icons while, while writing entries. While it might work in India, and I'm saying might because India is still a very cricket crazy country and most of the judges will understand about cricket, but that might not cut a ice, say, when it is submitted in something like an APAC or something like uh, in a Khan equivalent kind of thing. Similarly, the reason why I'm giving this example is to tell that how can you really keep it simple and make it relatable to the audiences, which are basically the judges who will shortlist for round one equivalent. Uh, I was reading one very interesting story. Uh, uh, and the, the reason I'm giving a lot of examples from the world of uh, movies is because some of the best stories come from the world of movies, right? Like, for example, uh, what you see as a second panel is a poster of the movie Alien. And uh, this is the shortest uh, pitch in terms of number of words used to sell a story. The two script writers, they went to the producer and they just said three words. And that sort of helped them for the producer to understand the concept. Typically, you know, the narration is a two hour, three hour kind of process. And there are a lot of things which go into it, a lot of calculations, a lot of qualitative as well as quantitative aspects. But this piece was really inspirational because I'm sure it will get broken to two words someday. Uh, but the, the alien screenwriters went to the producers and said, uh, this story is the jaws of space. Which, and the context was Jaws as a movie was just released a couple of years ago. So everybody knew what Jaws was about. So they said, this is Jaws in space. So people could really, the producers and the decision makers could really visualize the story and they signed up for it. Uh, the, a reference that I can give from the world of Mondelez is, you know, they have something which is called Madbury, which is a, a destination where you can go and create your own version of Cadbury dairy milk by adding some of your ingredients and other things. And once you write these six, seven words, which is Madbury making your own Cadbury dairy milk, it becomes extremely clear that this is going to be like the story on which the entire entry is going to be built. And people are already aware that this is what is going to come. Uh, so this is one thing that all of you definitely need to keep in mind that what's your core story and like, can you really tell your story in a very simple and easy way? That that this appeals to the this appeals to and uh, makes everybody who reads it understand in a very easy way without any complex jargons without any complex words that not necessarily uh, everyone will understand. So going to the second uh, tip, going to the next slide. Uh, see, all of us have like read this uh, this quotation or this saying that you know picture is worth thousand words. But in the context of awards and specifically in the context of MVs, my personal belief is uh, a video is worth a million words. And uh, I always uh, believe and uh, this is something that most of the winning teams manage to do in a brilliant way, which is they treat the written entry as well as the AV as two partners coming together in any doubles tournament or any other sporting analogy like a batsman, striker and a non-striker. When both come together is when there is a, that the effect, the combined effect is far more, the sum is greater than the individual totals. So one of the key things uh, is a uh, lot of people take a lot of effort in writing a return entry. And uh, sometimes even when some of us judge, we get some great entries are there, but they don't necessarily have an AV at all. And Having an AV, just stay on the same slide. Having an AV obviously helps and helps in a significant way because uh, two things happen, right? Um, it's a truth that most of us in media planning world understand that, you know, the same message with greater frequency has a far more higher chance of registering. Like imagine your word document as frequency of one and imagine your audio visual as a frequency of two. The chances that when both combine, the combined effect is far more higher. And we also know that different people have different ways of learning, right? Some people are very good when it comes to audio. Some people are very good when it comes to video. Some people are very good when it comes to, you know, learning from uh, reading written word, text, that kind of thing. So if in a combination of 
the text word, the audio and the video coming together has higher chance of cutting across audiences with different kinds of learning abilities and learning skills. So one key recommendation is definitely keep in mind that uh, both your written document and AV are critical and ensure that uh, you tandem them both in a nice way to create a good uh, deadly partnership. So that's the that's the second uh, sort of tip. So going to the next slide. So uh, uh, one of the things that we have seen is that uh, there are different entries which go through different uh, evolution, right? And uh, like I have not personally come across an entry which in the which has been like finalized in like three rounds or at least three drafts or three editings kind of thing. I mean, I whatever I have seen personally has at least been a three to four minimum kind of, you know, uh, editing and re-editing and rewriting equivalent kind of thing. You just click once. So uh, there are two ways. I'm sure there are more, but two ways which has worked brilliantly for entries to become winning entries. The first one is basically what we call a maker checker reviewer kind of process. So there is a person who writes the entry. There is a person who sort of checks it and there is a person who sort of reviews it or gives a neutral perspective, not being close to the entry equivalent. And then it goes through a process like that. We find that the end product is far more better and has a higher chances of winning. Similarly, uh, there is another way, which is basically there are people who write on the entry and there is an outsider who's necessarily not attached to the entry or has not worked on that, that kind of business or that kind of entry. So that neutral perspective or an independent perspective is something which can like sort of really give direction. And a lot of people treat entries as a very personal thing. Hence, there is a personal attachment uh, in this entire process. Uh, one way to get a very dispassionate, neutral opinion is to either use one of these two processes which are there. I'm sure there are other processes, uh, multiple more of them, but these two are ones which we have seen in entries which have sort of gone to the next level, either been either in terms of shortlisting or even in terms of the final conversions. So one, uh, no, sorry if you go back, one reason why this is so important is please also look at whether the previous point, which is the entry and the written document and the video or even this, which is numerous editing and re-editing equivalent kind of thing. The, uh, the reason why this is so important is uh, judges have anywhere between 25 to 30 plus kind of entries that they need to. And in, within that, so many entries which are there, how can you ensure that your entry has a higher memorability or has a higher, uh, uh, how does it stick in the mind of the judge is important. And these kind of tips and tricks sort of help in it having a higher memorability when it goes through these processes, which is uh, there as part of uh, the tip one, tip two, and tip three. So going to the next slide. Again, see, uh, this is a straight, uh, I don't know how many of you know this gentleman by name, Larry Tesler. His famous invention is something that all of us use almost on a daily basis. It is uh, control C, control V. Basically the copy paste, cut paste function has been created by this gentleman uh, so many years ago. So what we see is that there are times, and uh, this is also feedback from uh, the different uh, people when we speak to them, that um, one of the things that we managed to gather is the same entry when it is entered in multiple categories. Um, I wouldn't know if it is because of uh, time being less or because uh, the number of people per entry being less, I wouldn't know the reason. But what typically happens is the, um, let's say for example, a category like digital display and a digital uh, multiple media usage, they have the same entry and it's not customized to the category in which it is put in. And that sort of doesn't cut well uh, because obviously the judges can completely see through it and they just think they it loses the significance and relevance, right? So one of the key things that all of you need to keep in mind is because each entry is unique in the context of the category, in the context of the, whether it's an innovation entry or it's a strategy entry, where it is put in, 
just ensure that it gets customized basis the headliners which is given by the ad club and basis the story that you write in so that people can see that how it is relevant in the category that it is being entered and it is getting judged against so going to the next one uh i'm i'm a uh, can't uh, like not not have like a cricketing analogy in a presentation of mine uh, this is something uh, which all of us know and would have read about like uh, dhoni is a very strong believer that the process is more important than the result i mean you can convert that by saying that the journey is more important than the destination so as long as you know that whether it is a series of these five steps or the series of other things that you and uh, your colleagues have as long as you ensure you follow the right process the chances that it will win is far more higher vis-a-vis -vis if you do not focus on the process at all uh, i think somewhere one thing uh, uh, which sort of gets lost and this is my personal opinion um, and i have seen a lot of people uh, becoming better because of this entire mvs as a mechanism uh, which is that uh, don't don't treat the mvs whether it is the round one which is writing the entries or round two which is making the presentation as a as a serious job or as a you know yet another job to be done this should be fun and what i mean when this should be fun is you should enjoy the process um, if on any given day there is somebody who enjoys the process vis a vis somebody who is like exceptionally good and does not enjoy the process any day i will pick somebody who enjoys the process because the chance that uh, he will add he or she will add in that entire thing is far more higher so don't lose the fun element there is fun in rewriting trust me when i say this and this comes from experience uh, when there are people who share feedback i know that the first uh, intuition or reaction will be you know what that's not necessarily correct uh, but it's very very important and to be cognizant to take that feedback like the way it is and not to treat it like a serious job or not to treat it like a yet another job to be done what's the point of doing all of this if you don't have fun and i'm a very strong believer that if you make this entire process as fun and as learning as you can then the worst case scenario result you have is you will become a better storyteller you will become a better presenter and the best case result that you will have is not only your entry will win but you are also a good presenter and a good storyteller so not don't lose focus of the process and don't lose focus of the fact that this is meant to be a fun and learning process and not meant to be a typical job list or it not meant to be like something you need to deliver in next time uh, in a very robotic kind of way end of day we are humans and we need to keep these two elements in complete balance so if you go to the next slide so i don't want to give a long list but fairly simple ones first one is basically ensure that you have a simple story and translate that simple story so that everybody can understand second is that ensure that you have a av in place so that it complements the uh, written word document entry third one editing and rewriting is so important to this process you need to ensure that uh, you follow any of the processes either the maker checker reviewer or you get somebody else who has an outside in kind of view to check this every entry is a unique entry so you need to keep in mind that uh, uh, especially for entries where you are putting the same entry in multiple categories you need to sort of rewrite it and ensure that uh, the category contextualization done in a proper way and most importantly uh, treat this as a process which will help you grow and ensure that you have fun so if you go to the next slide now some of this uh, is uh, for your round 2 which is when you make a presentation um, uh, to to the in the round 2 with the to the industry uh, uh, marketing and media fraternity going to the next slide uh, and this is something uh, which is being told to us by a client and uh, you know um, he used to say uh, well begun is half done so he every time we will discuss a story or write an entry or make a presentation he his typical question will be like what's your james bond opening and for some of you who would have 
most of you i'm assuming would have seen james bond movie they have remained the same over the last uh, 50 60 odd years so it opens with a big bang there is a great fight or there is a great action sequence and then it moves into the frame on the right side where the protagonist comes and announces himself saying the name is bond james bond that has remained constant through so many years and the reason why it's remained like that is because it's a well established part of the recipe well established part of the formula that it works and works brilliantly and a good beginning sort of can help to set the context in a very nice way and to tell the story in a far more brilliant way so one thing you need to keep in mind is what's your james bond opening when um, you go forth for your round 2 so going to the next slide uh for those of you who have not seen uh, steve jobs iphone presentation i would strongly recommend that uh, you need to go and see that uh and my personal belief is that what you are presenting is not a powerpoint presentation or it's not a deck or it's not a ppt but it's your canvas where you can bring your creative side your art side your visual side alive in a far far superior way and typically the hack in this is have a very good headline have a very good image and maybe some three four words to support that and typically if you go and refer to the iphone presentation that we are talking about this is something that you that you need to keep in mind right typical average slides have anywhere between 40 to 45 words single slides the steve job iphone presentation had 21 words in the first three slides now coming to the next one which is uh what we have normally seen is uh, if you just click once more what what we have normally seen is there are four parts to the normal presentation that happens right there is a brief there is a solution there is an execution and there is a result what we have seen is people when they present their story they do the brief and the solution via the ppt and then they play the av which also has the brief and the solution and sometimes it does not necessarily cut ice because you already told the story of what is the brief and solution and if your av again starts with that 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 might not necessarily be the ideal way uh, that or that might not be the way in case you have you have your, in your mind how to make this a winning entry so we just click one more slide down once more please no, down you need to go down so this is maybe one of the ideal ways we have also seen people where they show only the execution in av and come back to the results in the canvas or in the uh, ppt form uh, but to make both as a extension so that it adds to each other rather than being uh, again repeating or a disjoint kind of thing is something that will work well we can click down so as i said just summarizing for the round 2 uh, like what's your james bond opening and it's your can canvas to make your painting or your art and not necessarily a ppt and then how can you make the av as an extension to the story and not like sort of repeat so going to the next slide so that's that's about it from my side uh, these are some of the tips and uh, make your own magic potion using some of these and some of the other ones Uh, thank you sai i think uh, we are open to have questions and they can give the questions in the chat okay while we await the questions sai i have a question for you punita here uh, tell me a uh, uh, how long does two questions how long do you take to write an entry i know i mean if you know it what to write it can be done even in half an hour but normally you know what's the time that is to be spent and the second thing is how do you balance your day to day work with write, writing entries right because writing entries is an additional job to your day to day work that actually happens so how does how does people at wave make up uh, you know manage the day to day and the entries do you have a separate team that works on it 
or for example you do it after office hours just uh, uh, explain i mean answer that for us and guide us please no honestly uh, none of us honestly have the luxury of a separate dedicated team for uh, awards who uh, people have their regular day jobs and they manage to do this on the top of that uh, the good thing is as i said uh, since there is a there is a team which is there and when i say the team i just don't mean from the waymaker ecosystem but it also extends to some of the clients and one thing which we've seen which has worked well for us is when people plan it like the way we plan any campaign right we know that if you have to take a campaign live by x date you know that you need to do step 1 2 3 whether it is in terms of closing the plan or you know raising the estimates or ensuring that the partners gets the estimate there is a clear timeline for all of that i think that that discipline is something that that's worked well uh, honestly in terms of hours i like i have seen people who have done the first draft in like a day and also people who have taken maybe two days one of the things that we encourage people is to like block chunks of 2 3 hours and only focus on this because you can't multitask uh, this this requires uh, 100% of time and attention um so that is something we uh, we request and ask people who sort of write the written entries to you know block some time and do that uh, that that is something that seems to be working and uh, one more thing is that uh, when people sort of bounce ideas off each other a lot of time goes into the prep work before they actually start writing the entry so they have they, they put a list of what all they need they know that in some cases there are people who work on the entries and i can't like we have seen both the ones work people who have worked on the uh, work pres- write the entry and people who have not worked on the work also write the entry and clear there's not like a much of a difference between both we have seen both the groups come and uh, emerge as winners and uh, uh, sai typically at mb since the last couple of years we have stopped asking for a uh, uh, properly manufactured av which earlier used to happen it is like uh, a support actually a supporting creative the work as it appears in the marketplace and it is only in the second round that people come and present so the writing skills have to be all the more important right yeah absolutely that's why i said both the writing i said don't discount the av because just it's the supporting it can be it can be turned around to work in your favor and typically when we see the ones which win they have always been backed with the av even in the round one yeah good writing is good good writing will definitely help you but if you have a good writing and an av that's a killer combination sai so if you can open the q and a uh, there are questions that have come in uh, so you can start answering them so Just a second. Uh, first question: Do we also have to submit the AV? I, AV is a support. I don't think it's a compulsory document. Uh, uh, but I would request people to think about it because that's an important component, right? It's not compulsory. Similarly, if AV is a extension, yeah. See, the AV is an extension of the PPT I mentioned in the round two. So typically, some of the ones that we have seen is. people write show in the presentation what is the brief and what is the solution they did and when they play the av again they again show what is the brief and what is the solution they did so i was referring to that in terms of see uh, it's a esteemed jury and they are like fairly experienced and knowledgeable uh, so they don't you 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 wouldn't want to like repeat the same thing again in the finite time that you have so it was coming from that that aspect uh what is the right tonality for a winning entry should it be fun and engaging uh honestly no straight answer to this uh it depends upon completely the uh, with some categories and some brands uh the the tone obviously becomes uh, easier if it's that something for example if a netflix stands for netflix and chill you can end up doing the gen z thing there vis-a-vis something which is not necessarily in that space but having said that uh, Uh, i think it doesn't matter whether it's uh, whether it is fun or engaging or straightforward and factual as long as it is simple and you are able to land the core uh, core story of why this is 
why this deserves to be shortlisted or why this deserves to win. As long as that point comes across clearly, it doesn't matter which style you uh, put up. Yeah, I mentioned that uh, um, in round one, AV is a supporting thing, even as Bipin clarified. I'm just saying that uh, entry plus AV is a good combination that one needs to keep in mind. I'm not saying it's compulsory, but I'm saying it's a good combination. While we are waiting for more questions, I just another question from me. How does Wavemaker, Wavemaker come with all those uh, winning headlines? Uh, you know, because most of the times your entries, uh, the headline sums up, you know, what the entry is. And it's also very creatively expressed, uh, the headline, you know, of all your entries. Uh, so who, I mean, again, who, how, can you just articulate on that, please? Same. It, it is a, uh, uh, Punita, very good question. It is a, it is a part of the writing the entry process itself. We have typically seen two ways. One way is we have seen people who will first write the headline and then write the story. Or people write the story and then try to reverse engineer the headline. Uh, I am a believer of the first one because then it becomes natural and easier. But even the second one works as well. Got it. Got it. There's another question that's come. So. Yep. How will the how will the entry story change from digital media buying perspective? I'm not sure, Parag, if you can just come on the video or come on the call and explain what do you mean. Can you help me? Please, can you please help me understand the question better? Because whatever the principles I have told, those principles are applicable irrespective of whichever is the category, whether it's a digital entry, whether it's best innovation, digital, best innovation TV. Or even for strategy, all these principles apply for irrespective of whichever is the category. In case you have anything specific, uh, if you can just come and ask, happy to address that. Can we unmute uh, Parag or uh, do we want to uh, want him to ask on the same uh, Q and A box, Bipin? Hi, yeah. sorry. Uh, I had an internet uh, issue. I couldn't hear his answer. I'm so sorry. No problem, Parag. I just wanted to know, can you please help me understand your question? Because all the principles which have been told work for any any entry. It's not uh, meant only for digital or meant only for any particular category or any particular media. So our query is uh, like how uh, planning perspective, they would talk about the uh, campaign story and how it got executed. This would be the whole crux of a planning entry. But for buying, we will focus on the efficiencies and the negotiation of the deal and the whole uh, turnaround on the deal. How did it go? So how would that change for us? As, a, as in when we write it, we would write more on the buying perspective, not for a specific client, but on, uh, you know, two to three uh, case sure. studies on different clients on what we worked on. See, the, the story remains the same, which is um, how can you create a simple, clear story, right? Mm -hmm. Your story is you accomplished X results via digital buying process. Then you will, you will give an example of how you did about it and explain it so that even a person who's not necessarily or who's not very into the digital media buying will understand it, right? Got it. It's really simple. That 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 is as important. Similarly, how can you ensure that uh, uh, you structure the story in such a way, how, that the sto how does your entry, even the digital buying entry, goes through the different editing and re-editing and rewriting? That remains the same, right? That doesn't change at all. It doesn't matter whether it's planning or buying. The uh, storytelling rules don't really change. Got it. Got it. Thank you, Sayara. Yeah, Purita, can we go for the next one? Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks, Sayara. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you so much, Bipin. Thank yeah, you. So thank much. you for being a part of it. And uh, uh, we can't say any more questions. So uh, 
thank you Mick, for making the time and I think we'll now get John Brito to present. John, all yours on Unilever case studies. So, Thank you, Sai, and thank you, Panita. I'm just putting up my deck on the screen. Please confirm if it's visible. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. So, I have uh, looked at only the writing part while uh, so I had covered both. So, we have taken, I mean, I've taken the brief and understood that how are we going to write for MVs which can get us some win, right? There are a few things which we enter into before writing. Let's get something clear so that we can go one by one. So, the first step that I would recommend is Pick your battle. So there are more than uh, 40 categories that we have that MVs, we can write entries. Look at your campaign and see where it will fit well or where you can compete for a better win. In the number of entries doesn't matter, but you'll have to be sure about how the campaign was and where it will be suiting in more so that it will be able to get the higher possibilities of a win. Then you should curate. The first thing that you should look at is you should write an entry to get shortlisted. That's your first win. For you to move to the next stage, you should be shortlisted. So write for shortlisting. So what all we should write is something we will cover in this. Let's go. And obviously you'll have to execute these two well with the best writing by which you'll be able to show the larger picture of the campaign through your words. So that's how we are going to see it. So yes, when you look at picking up the category, look at what the idea or the solution that, that was part of the campaign, and hence that becomes the crucial thing to decide which category you enter in, right? So let me put some you know, big words for you to understand and how the campaigns was around it, which helped us to enter into the right categories. So if you think anything fresh that it is something for the first time, and industry first. These are the things that becomes a very good case for you to enter. And it can go into multiple categories. But what people will look for is, is it new? If it, if it is something new, I'm sure I think it, it should be given a chance. So look for industry first thinking and executions. At the same time, you also look at whether that particular campaign is platform agnostic. Does it have multiple formats? And it does it involve multiple mediums or platforms? So look for those. So that it, it becomes a good combination, it can get you a win, or at least the case becomes very interesting for the reviewers to read. Yes, brands with purpose grow, and what purpose the brand stood, and what was the purpose it, it took in the campaign, and how it was landed well. If there is anything around it, please pick that. It's a very good uh, campaign and see how you will be able to articulate it better so that it will be easy for them to know. As well as it's not only the purpose establishment of the campaign, but it also will have real impact in the world, right? So these two campaigns are the testament of, of these two sections. So uh, Red Label Six Pack Band is something, it, it has won cans and Dow Stop the Beauty Test is something everybody knew, which has somewhat bring, brought in that impact in the real world, right? So these are the things that you should look for in a campaign which can get you one step further towards the win. And yes, nowadays, uh, tech-led campaigns are really becoming more and more. And see what sort of tech that we have involved in the campaign and hence how that can bring out the essence of the campaign out loud. And see if that if anything that happens to be tech used in the campaign, I think that will have a better and, and better possibility of winning. So look for these things in your campaigns and choose those campaigns wisely and enter into the respective categories so that itself will get you a better chance of winning. Moving on to the next section, which is, right, like uh, Sai mentioned, you, we should write each entries. So what we what normally do is we will we'll write the one entry for the campaign that becomes the base entry. And once that is done, and you know what, it will all go into these, these, these categories. We'll just adapt from, from that base entry. So this is what we normally typically do. We should be avoiding that. That's what Sai also explained. I also go up to explain the same. 
you should write ground up, write for each entries. Of course, the, the idea can go in multiple categories, please take it, but ensure that you write for that category so that the, the expectation of the category is different. And hence, you will have to write it differently. See how you can adapt it in, in such a way that if the, the category expectations are met. So it's better that you write it and so it becomes original. So that's how you will be able to differentiate same campaign going into multiple categories, standing out, out and, and, and it will be visible for, for everyone writing and reading these entries. Third, like I said, you have to write for shortlist, right? So while AV can help you, but the first thing first is, is your entry writing. So you'll have to explain what is at stake, right? That's a problem. So that will always be a problem. And so you'll have to really articulate the problem easily. And you'll also have to say, while this is at stake, what are the problems we had around it? Of course, we have enough and many problems we had, we have faced in the campaigns. So we'll have to see what all problems is worth it and ensure that you measure those problems easily on using words so that it is understood by the review for the reviewers. Third, of course, when these two are there, there, is, there will always be the hero. I think Sai had uh, nicely explained how uh, a hero comes in and then, and then does all of it. So yes, here your media solution becomes the hero. So make that a hero which comes in and saves the day, which brought the brand out, gave the growth. So bring in, in a nice uh, story format or template which will tell easily what's the problem, what all we had to face and how media solution helped us. So when we look at entry writing, this is coming out of the experiences of reading multiple entries in, in its draft levels. And we have seen that the goal or objective would be something, solve would be something else, and, and results are not talking to each other. So you'll have to see whether these three sections are talking to each other, right? So a nice way of doing it is you will you will have you'll find the keywords within these sections. If in, in the goal or objective only set up what is it, what sort of helps us. Uh, move on to the media swap. So you should have one or two keywords mentioned in the goal or objective section that can lead into media solve. And that very much when you explain, there are one or two keywords that you will plug in in the media solve, which becomes the, the, the key to the results. So it will have a you know continuous building and flowing of the thought and and and, the, and, the, and it's easy on the readers to go through it in, in totality. So see if you can build in these things. And so you'll ensure these things talks to each other. So all the entries, we would have these four things to land, any one of these four things to land, right? So look for those. If it's a strategy, how this strategy becomes the effective solution. And if it is an innovation-led entry, look and, and try to establish how differentiated it is and why it is unique, right? So focus on these areas. When it comes to integrated media, there are a lot of mediums would have been in play and see, one, you'll have to explain how many mediums we have used or you have used in your campaign. At the same time, to what extent you have used those mediums so that it comes out clearly. There is a lot of mediums come into play to deliver the results. And we also have a team and people in one section. So while I think the digital media uh, buying a question which the Parag had raised, I think that would uh, come in here as well. So how this team had been the pillar to execute or bring out the solution and deliver the results, right? So this can sit in this pillar. So see how you'll have to establish out of these areas of entries. These are the things we'll have to bring it out loud so that it is visible for the view reviewers to pick it up and then, and then shortlist you going forward. So let me get into how we can write. So when you, when you go to write an entry, we we'll look at these three things, right? The first is design, then you should organize and, and rewrite or rewrite. It can go in any any you know, uh, order as well. So when we think of uh, design, yes, we have clearly we are clearly given what should come in each and every uh, categories to write. So there is always a communication goal, there is situation analysis, there is solution, there is execution, and there is results. So it's all given. So you'll have to understand really what comes where. Right. So when you think of a design of, of this entry, use less words. It's, it's easy for them and keep more of white space. We'll explain this further in, in the coming slides. But these are the top lines I really want you to take forward when you go uh, sit and write. 
before you start writing, please organize your thoughts. Like I said, in the template, there are multiple sections. Organize your thoughts in such a way, which will go in what section. One thing is, we will always confuse. Uh, we'll put our insights in the, within the situation analysis itself. So don't do that. See and organize your thought, what will go where in your entire entry writing. Entry writing. As I think uh, Sai also mentioned this, write and rewrite. So this is one uh, one thing which I've learned from University of Colorado is that you have to ask these three things once you're done writing. You can say that you're done writing only when you meet these three criteria. One, is it clear, simple, and short? Otherwise, that document is not done. So you'll have to see and write and ask these questions, is it clear, is it simple? So that you will be able to say, yeah, if you can use better words, you can use lesser words, so please use it. That's what uh, write and rewrite, which becomes the important part of entry writing. So yes, when when I oh sorry, when we go to write, we'll have to look at the most priority thing is clarity. Anything that can come, but you cannot uh, let go of clarity. So keep that as as your top priority, so that your words can show the big picture that you can see on the screen now. It's a beautiful picture, right? So we are sitting and then watching it through a window pane. So this the window pane is your is your word is your document. So imagine it that way and then write use your words words wisely so that you will be able to show the big picture. Waste no time for the reviewers because they don't have much of time and you have to spend time to make it easy for them. So yes, uh, the same University of Colorado professors said that anything that you can write when you go to rewrite, see to that you can reduce it by one third. So that much possibilities are there. So you'll have to be ruthless in your rewriting because you have to keep it short and simple. So be on it and reduce it as much as possible so that it is easy for everyone to read and understand. Same time, the, the reason why we have to use lesser words is because when some when the reviewers see the document, it the attention will be going more towards where it is clutter. No, please keep it easy for the eyes so that it flows through the document. They can cover the entire entry completely. So keep it easy for the eyes. There are a few things we have noted in, in the drafts that we have seen in the past is that people try to be smart, right? So you use a lot of jargons, make it complex, and use of different things. Nowadays, there is AI also. So don't go, don't go there. First, you understand whom you are writing it for. Then keep it simple. Don't make it complex. And say it in your own words so that people are able to find the voice of your words in your writing. So look at this statement. In order to enhance our investment in maximizing our systems without the encumbrance of onerous cost, it is incumbent upon us to maximize our profitability. This is what somebody had written. Of course, it is complex. No one could understand it. It can be well written as to invest in new systems. We need to increase our profitability. This is simple. At the same time, it, it tells you the point very short. So try and look for simple and short lines and sentences, which keeps it easy. Yeah, you'll have to have your own voice find your own words. So when people go to write, they look at AI, and this is what I have attempted of showing you how it becomes. What is the communication goal for selling toothpaste? It gives you a long list, and people say, make it in three lines, and here it is. Instead, you can simply say, increase brand's penetration by establishing the benefits of usage, resulting in white teeth and strong gums. This has an authority and this is very simple and it has your own words. So look for the, the tips that I've given here. It sim simplifies the words. At the same time, you, all, you also can bring in your own, your own voice in it. And be specific. It's, it's very important when it comes to it, especially when you go to describe your situation, your communication goal or the objective. And at the same time in the results, right? So I've given an example here. The launch campaign was highly successful, yielding best-in-class lead generation and conversions leading to business growth. 
well, very good. But you have to be really specific in terms of what it did where and how much. So the launch campaign increased lead generation by 50% and conversions by 20%, adding $50K to the bottom line. It's, it's furthermore clear and it is quantified. So be specific in terms of what exactly it did and where it did so that it is easy for the reviewer to understand to the extent of the results or the, or these situations or the problems. So please be specific rather than it is difficult and look for these words you can avoid in, in, in your interacting so that it doesn't have confusion. Yep, to summarize, we say that write campaigns in the right category so that you get your uh, possibilities of winning more. When you curate, please don't adapt, write your own entry and write for each entry, explain the problem, scale the barriers around it and make solution the hero here. When you go to execute, so design, it should go easy on the eyes, lesser words. In, in, in the organize, I would want you to all remember, go pick up the right narration into the right sections and don't mismatch it so that it is, it is not clear for others to read. When it comes to editing and re rewriting, you will, you will not stop unless you say that it is clear, simple, and short, so that it, it is easy for the reviewer to read and, and give you a good shortlist. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, fantastic, John. Yeah. So, questions? So. Uh... Uh, there's one. Okay, John, while we await the questions, I have a question. Uh, see, Unilever is very data rich as a company, right? I mean, you have lots of data points to uh, uh, to show the results, the ROI, however mass they may be, or however direct that they may be. But a lot of other clients are not as data rich as Unilever. Uh, so what do you suggest those clients do? I think uh, thanks to the digital ecosystem today, uh, we can rely on the other data resources, right? So Google can give you a search increase. You have enough of uh, platforms which can capture the conversations and the number of conversations that it had generated. So those becomes a third party as well as a, a signal to say whether it has delivered or not. And that can become an add-on as well. Got you, got you. Participants, any questions that you have, please put it in the Q&A session for John to answer. So. Yeah. Do you have any questions or should we move on to the next case study then? Yeah, done, Bipin. Uh, both of them have finished present. Done, done, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, John, I think uh, you've been probably crystal clear because we don't see any questions for you. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for making the time and uh, for just the deep insights uh, that you shared with us, John. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, uh, is uh, Sairam also here on the call or is he left? No, I saw his comment. He's there. Oh, si so thanks, Sai and John. I mean, that was wonderful. I think two different perspectives giving a whole lot of... Uh, tips in terms of what needs to be done. I'm also seeing a question. Uh, yeah. John, uh, if you can answer that question. What it is to be added in situation analysis. Of course, it depends on the campaign. But uh, if I have to pick up an example, uh, same uh, toothpaste example, category is highly penetrated. 
99, 95 plus penetration and the kind of uh, usage is, is really high and competition clutter is even more high. Then uh, you can quote the amount of GRPs that it generates as a category in a month and so on for a year and how difficult it is within the number of communications that it put out in a, in, in a month, right? So this becomes a problem for you and it, it also describes the situation, right? It's very difficult for someone or any brand to win in this space. So that becomes a situation for you. Obviously, the, the, the ask would be to grow in terms of penetration or market share or, or volume. So these are the three things becomes an important for a, a toothpaste category to grow. So you can put that as, as a situ situation where it is really difficult. And you have to explain what's at stake at the same time, how big the barrier is. Thank you. For FMCG brands, the results are not so quickly measurable as it takes time to get to results like market share, sales, etc. How do we then look at results in this case? Um, I, I think uh, FMCG is the category where you will get monthly data coming out. So, yeah, if that is not there, you can get in touch with a uh, client and understand what sort of uplifts they have seen in terms of uh, in terms of the sales. At the same time, you also can be more specific in terms of which product or SKU that you have advertised and what sort of increase that, it, that they have seen in, in the, as a result of that campaign is something very much measurable by end of the month. So yes, that you can take it up as a result. So any particular reference you have for uh, the grand FE that was won? I mean, any story to tell besides what you have already narrated, actually? Uh, sorry, Bipin, I, I, Bipin, I didn't know what was it, so... No, no, I, I'm asking Sai. Yeah, Sai, please. Uh, Bipin, other than the ones uh, between what I told and between what uh, John mentioned. I think it covers for it like literally my sense is it covers for easily 80-85% of what anybody will end up doing. So okay. I think one thing which both of us have not spoken much about is pure passion itself, right? The more passion you put the results will come out proportionately. That's my belief as in, I mean like I can say with a lot of pride that in MV's <laughs> I think Punita, we don't have any more questions. Yeah. Do we wait for a couple of minutes? Because uh, yes. people are uh, posting questions slowly. So. Any other questions from the participants? Uh, please do use the do you do use the Q and A box to ask them to both John and Saira. I think Bipin, we should close it. Uh, yeah. We close it. You can yes. close it. Thanks, Sai, and thank thanks. You. That was wonderful. Thank you, Sai. Thank you.